Good afternoon. Can I see some hands when I ask you who is scared he or she is influenced by fake news? I can hardly see you, but it's not that many. Right, and who of you thinks the person next to him is secretly a troll? <laughs> yeah, look each other in the eyes. Okay, that's all of you. Wow, that's promising. Right. Okay, and the final question is, who here even pays for the news anymore? Who pays for news? Hmm. Right, let's talk about that then. Okay, um, the topic of fake news garnered a lot of international attention, not without a reason, because it impacted the elections of over 17 countries. And the most famous example is, of course, the election cycle, the past election cycle in America, where fake news might have an impact on the outcome of the elections. One out of four Americans visited a fake news website just before election day. Were they influenced? Some academics remain uncertain, as 60% of these Americans already were pro-Trump. Nevertheless, a lot of journalists, politicians, academics, and I hope you as well, are scared about fake news, and they should be. I'm pretty scared. I think we all suffer from a severe flu, and we need cure. And I tell you why. But first, uh, in the Netherlands, we are not so concerned yet. Three out of ten people in the Netherlands mention they are scared of uh, fake news, and I think that number is about right when looking at this audience. Um, that's actually pretty, well, it surprises me, as our neighboring countries, everyone is much more scared. And is that attitude of what we call in Dutch nuchterheid, unconcernedness, is that right? Well, I don't think so, because also in the Netherlands, we suffer a lot from fake news. All of you will receive thousands of messages on a daily basis that are actually fake. And most of these messages you will get from trolls, these little figures. Who are these people? That's actually people like you and me, people that like to bully and that use the Internet as a forum to vent their frustrations. They really like to contaminate the public debate. And it can be anyone, it can be people like Kelly, who is in her daily life a secretary, just a pleasant woman, but then sometimes she goes on the internet and she throws a bomb there. She really likes to bully. And these people are not only really annoying, they can also really be, well, scary and even uh, impact the public debate. This was the incident in Utrecht last year, the shooting incident, most of you remember, I guess. I live in Utrecht, and at that day, the city of Utrecht became a pandemonium of panic. My kids uh, were locked in their school that day, so I desperately needed information. And I was looking at all the news websites, trying to figure out what really happened. But then I read a lot of these messages, that there are more shooters and they were shooting at schools. Well, that doesn't make any mother feel any better. So that tells you, I think, that trolling is really annoying. Next to that, we also have to deal with bots. And bots are automated accounts, fake accounts, um, that sometimes are connected in a botnet. And when they spread information, that's actually, well, that can be nice even. If it's news, it can be really helpful. But when it's fake accounts and they spread disinformation, they can have a huge impact. So last summer, Twitter started a cleanup action and removed a lot of accounts. Uh, within one month, they removed over 35 million accounts. That's quite a lot. And Facebook even removed 2 billion accounts, which is massive. This cleanup action even caused, had an enormous effect also on a lot of political parties. They lost actually some voters because of that. Well, that tells you that even political parties are using fake accounts to get more fans to increase their fan base. So that's also pretty scary. So we have the bots, we have the trolls, and we also have to deal with algorithms. And then it becomes really scary, because with algorithms, we can define our perfect news menu. Based on our search behavior, algorithms give us a daily 
perfect menu that fits our preferences. And because of that, we only eat pizza. Most of you daily eat your pancakes, pizza, or french fries, whatever you like. But you are hardly confronted with news that is not so much within your taste bubble. We all are locked up in a specific bubble. And because we hardly get confronted with news outside of that bubble, we actually become less tolerant. And that's pretty scary as well. So then finally, we also have to deal with deep fakes. And that's a topic that garnered a lot of attention lately. With deep fakes, we can manipulate videos and do some face swapping, so we can turn Trump into a climate activist. We can do a lot of fun stuff with it, but, well, if we can't distinguish the facts from fiction anymore, then it's becoming pretty complicated. We can even generate people that don't exist, like one of the girls on this picture. Who do you think is not real in this picture? Who thinks the left lady is fake? Can I see some hands? So, the left lady. And with this image, who thinks the guy on the left is fake? Well, you're pretty clear about that. Okay, and the final one, who thinks the left lady is fake? Yeah, some doubts. Let me go back. With the first image, the lady on your left, always have to check, uh, <laughs> she's the real lady. The other one is fake. You can see it from the background image. The background is a bit blurry. Um, the hair is also manipulated. You can see that it's not done really well. But that's for now. The technology will become more advanced, and then we can create a perfect image. With this image, it's actually more clear. And you can see, if you look really closely, that the guy on the right has a sort of water stain behind his ear. Can you see that? Yeah. Let's I mixed it up again, the left one then. <laughs> um, that's something that's an easy um, thing to recognize in fake imageries, that they have these water stains. So if you see that, you immediately know this one is faked. And the final one, this woman on your left, is the fake one. And if you look really closely in her neck, she has a sort of... Well, it's not cancer, it's not fat, but it's not good manipulated. But uh, as I mentioned already, technology is becoming more advanced, so in a couple of months even, we can't recognize the real from the fake anymore. So what can we do about this? Well, the first line of defense, as always, is education. We need to become more digital literate. And we need to become more aware of the mechanisms at play in fake news. We need to know what a bot is, what a troll does. And that doesn't need to be very boring. It can actually be pretty fun. This is one of my favorites. It's called Drog. It's a troll factory that uh, gives trainings and workshops worldwide. And they ask people deliberately to create a fake message. So they ask you to design a fake news and even spread it in a safe environment. And because of that, you become more aware of the mechanisms at play. And they call it the injection theory. So they inject you with the fake virus. Then you start to create antiviruses and become more resilient. It actually makes sense. So researchers from Cambridge have been looking into this, and it's actually true. This inoculation theory is effective. We will do something similar in the Brabant region as behavioral scientists to see if we can create new educational programs. Because it's fun to do, and it works, it's effective. So that's the first thing we could do. The second one is that there are a lot of tools available that can help us to detect trolls, to check social media accounts. Um, social sensor is a really good one, detects accounts, verifies them. And we also have Claim Buster available, which is a really good tool. It can really empower journalists when uh, they look for claims in specific speeches. Claim Buster can definitely help them because it translates speeches, political speeches, directly into text and then flags the claims that are dubious. So this is truly helpful for journalists. We designed a tool ourselves as well. It's called the Journalist Navigator. 
to find specific experts in a domain. So if a journalist is writing or compiling his article, he will find specific experts that can help him to verify the specific information or that can give him additional sources. These kind of tools are extremely helpful and we need to develop much more in this field, but it's still, well, just a tool. And sometimes they are not reliable at all. This is my own account, and as you can see, I'm not that trustworthy. So <laughs> there's some work to do there. Um, so we have tools, we have education, but you can also do something yourself. And I really like this initiative in Lithuania, where there's an elf army. Thousands of volunteers are fighting trolls online. They call themselves elves. And they work together with politicians, with journalists, and try to, well, make the debate a bit better, just by fighting the trolls. That's a pretty fun initiative. Another one that I think most of you are familiar with is Bellingcat. It's a British research institute that now also has its headquarters in The Hague. And Bellingcat tries to um, make reconstructions of specific events. And they have teams of hackers, volunteers, designers, journalists, everyone who likes to search for information, sometimes in the dark web, helps Bellingcat to find the truth, which is something that can really be helpful. We did this with students, um, and we looked at the, the Utrecht incident, the shooting incident, to find out who was mentioning the word terror, that it is a terror attack, and who were actually these trolls that were contaminating the discussion. So this is also really helpful. But then finally, uh, I think what we all should do is to become more aware of our own trolling behavior. Because I think most of you mentioned that the people next to him were actually, or could be, trolls. And most of us are actually. We spread and share information without really thinking what we're doing. And we need to become more aware of that. And instead of feeding the trolls, we should actually feed the news. Because journalists are trained to verify information. And they do that really well. And my recommendation to all of you is actually, it's of course perfectly fine to do some social snacking on social media each and every day. But please keep a healthy menu and read some real news and pay for it. Thank you.